All right, hello once again, Jeff Scott of Rankin Technical College, and as part of Rankin Technical College's AWD, or Application and Website Development Program, and in particular, the AWD 1112 Application Programming with Java class, I've been doing a series of video presentations based on the two textbooks for the class. I'm now in, still in the first textbook, which is Java Quick Syntax Reference. The book has 23 chapters, 22 of which I have on this PDF, and I've done the first 14 chapters, which puts me to chapter 15 on access levels. All right. Now, there are, as it says, four access levels available in Java. They are public, pr protected, private, and package. Package is also known as package private. Let's think about these again in terms of something that is not computer related. Again, I've given this example in different classes before. Public is like a public figure that should, at least in essence, be available to all. But if I make, for example, a class public, then that class can be used by other classes, maybe not even in the same program. If I make a method public, then that method can be called from that class and from any other class. Now, in a nutshell, I've had people ask me, Jeff, give me object-oriented programming. Give me the whole thing in a sentence. And I said, well, it's very hard to do. But I look at OOP, object-oriented programming, is using public methods to manipulate private data. Now, that's too much of a generalization because Java can have private methods. They're typically called helper methods that are used to work with public methods. Java can have public data, which it never really should. But Java can also have protected methods and protected data. So let's talk right now. So again, this is way too general of a definition. So let's talk about what each one of these means. If something has private access, as it says, it's the most restrictive type of access there is. That means that any member, any, any uh, method, any bit of data, all right, that has private before it can only be accessed from the class in which it's been defined. All right. Typically, most of the data that you create, not all necessarily, but typically most of the data that you create will be private. Package private. Package private is when you don't say private. You don't say public, you don't say private, you don't say protected. So with packaged private, what it means is you didn't put any kind of access in front of it, no name. So by default, that can be accessed anywhere from within the package, but not from another package. When you say from a package, what the heck does that mean? Well, again, look at our, our program and look at the top of the program. Package, that's the one we created. edu.rankin.jpscott.more new Java programs. So if I create something in there and I make it package private, anything that is within that package can use it. Protected's a little different. You may have heard of uh, friends and family type of programs. With protected access, if I make data protected or I make a method protected, it can be used anywhere in that class in which it's defined and in any subclass that extends that class. I want to say that again. All right, let me just quickly remove this. So with protected, remember, we have private access, which means it's only available in the class in which it's defined. We have protected, I'm sorry, we have package private access, 
which means you haven't said public or private or protected, so it's only available within the package in which it's defined. You have protected access, where it is available anywhere within anywhere within the class that it's defined in and in any child classes that, ex that are extended from that class. Okay. Finally, we've got public, which is unrestricted access. Basically, it can be used by anybody. Members declared directly in the package may only choose between package private and public access. It says, for instance, a top-level class will default to package private. Okay. Such a class will be accessible only within the containing package. There may be a reason for doing that. Now, when I teach this, I teach it in a certain way. It may be taught by other instructors in other ways, and may, maybe some of the stuff that I say won't be totally agreed to by everybody else. But it's the way I learned it. It's the way that I try to put it across to people. You can also have nested classes, and we will get into some of this, especially, especially when we talk about the Android part of the class. All right? With a nested class, it is a private class, usually, within a public class. Now, that's not maybe all the time like that, but normally that's the way that it is set up. All right? As a guideline, it says, when you choose an access level, it's generally best to use the most restrictive level possible. That goes back again to what I told you here. If in, in, a, in a true object-oriented programming situation, people don't use protected. All right, I've used protected, and I've had people chastise me for doing that. But if you, if you adhere to the guideline that I'm showing on the screen, that means you, all of your data is private. All of that private data will only be able to be manipulated by using the associated public methods. All right? And we're going to talk more about this stuff as we go on. All right? Using restrictive access levels also makes it easier to modify a class without breaking code for anybody else using the class. All right? So, before we go on and start talking about constants, all right, I'm going to put an end to this particular chapter, and we'll go on to chapter 16 in just a couple minutes.